Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel and today I have another box from Down the Rabbit Hole to share with you. I know you just saw one about a week ago but I'm trying to get a little bit more caught up on the boxes and the order in which they are sent to me but also of course I want to make sure that all of our unboxings for December are a little bit on the lighter side and if you don't already know Down the Rabbit Hole book box specializes in books that are a little bit on the darker side so I wanted to go ahead and get this August box in now in the month of November this is what the box looks like the subscription itself is $49.99 per month that does include domestic shipping and this is one of those book subscriptions where as you are reading along in the selected book for that month you come across a little sticky note that tells you to open the corresponding gift to really bring the pages to life so usually there's anywhere from four to seven gifts sometimes there's some extra gifts in Down the Rabbit Hole book box, and I do think it's really delightful. I have enjoyed a lot of the books that she has selected for subscribers. Some of them can be a little bit dark because we do sometimes get some horror. This book for the month of August, I will say, was just unlike anything else that I had read, but it was definitely intriguing. But it was one of those books that kind of left you feeling unsteady, unstable the entire way through. There was a point where it kind of went off the rails for me, but I kept reading because I wanted to do this review for all of you but um, I will say that it was very stream of consciousness almost sometimes it's definitely an unreliable narrator I do tend to like books that are like that if you are interested in subscribing to this box though you can use my code as well as the link that I'll leave for you in the description box below Noel 15 will save you 15% so if you do know someone who is an avid reader who does like things like mysteries thrillers some classics some darker reads this might be a good option or if you're just looking for a way to get into uh, reading a little bit more once again this might be one to consider so what she does is she'll actually put hints on social media and in emails leading up to the arrival of the box. The box itself will actually have a theme versus the title of the book, so it can remain a surprise until it arrives on your doorstep, or you can email and ask to get the actual title. And then there's actually uh, reading questions that she posts on social media as well as you go along. Now, I usually get the boxes a little bit later, as you probably heard already. This is the August box uh, because she sends them out to me once they've gone out to all the subscribers so that I I can take some photos for over on Instagram so you'll definitely see some of the products featured up close over there but let's talk about the book it was called Bunny a novel by Mona Awad so uh, one of the cool things that she does include so the theme for the book box was bunnies wear pink on Wednesdays I did not know what to think of that from that um, from that hint uh, but inside of these little pamphlets she does give us uh, some critical acclaim uh, usually a picture of the author as well as like a little mini bio which I always think is kind of interesting um, I will read the blurb on the back for you I was very intrigued by this book I thought it might be a little bit like yellow face because it is um, kind of featuring a writer that's basically in an MFA program at a renowned school so I have had that experience myself I've also had friends different friend groups where someone has been called bunny if not multiple people in college in grad school uh, just friends of friends and so there's definitely that world it's kind of like I don't know mean girls meets MFA program it's a very strange world but it was still some uh, space that I felt like I kind of knew the the lexicon I kind of knew the vibes I kind of knew that sort of uh, pretentious uh, analysis that happens in writing workshops so well, let me just talk about some of the other items this time we didn't get a regular bookmark we got like a little post uh, business card card sized one that says we never joke about bunnies bunny because there's basically four girls in the main characters um, writing workshop that all call each other bunny so it gets very confusing they all actually have names and then she gives them all nicknames so you know you have the Duchess and you have cupcake and it's kind of hard it's very disorienting and that's kind of the whole thing with this book is it's supposed to be a little disorienting um, like I said it does go off the rails at one point where it gets very supernatural and you just kind of you're like well I guess I'm gonna 
willing suspension of disbelief. I'm just going to go along with this in this weird world and see what happens. Uh, there's also a Spotify playlist, so those are some of the extras. This time around, we had five gifts with corresponding pages, so sometimes they come, you know, in a little envelope, sometimes they come in a mailer bag, sometimes uh, they come in a little box, and she's still kind of using some of the old stickers from the old box design. But I did also mark some passages if we have time for me to read to you, but uh, most of the time it takes the entire unboxing to get through these passages. If this is a book that uh, you are looking to read, you might not want to read it for, because of the spoilers, but honestly, like I said, it's so disorienting, you probably will still get the full experience when you finally get around to it. So let me just read the blurb for you on the back. A scholarship student who prefers the company of her dark imagination to that of most people, Samantha Heather Mackey, is utterly repelled by the rest of her graduate fiction writing cohort at New England's elite Warren University, a clique of unbearably saccharine yet sinister rich girls who call each other bunny and seem to move and speak as one. So very cute, right? They all call each other bunny and they're at Warren University. Uh, but everything changes when Samantha receives an invitation to the bunny's fabled smut salon and finds herself inexplicably drawn to their front door, ditching her only friend Ava in the process. As Samantha plunges deeper and deeper into the bunny's world and begins to take part in their monstrous experiments, the edges of reality begin to blur. Soon her friendships with Ava and the bunnies will be brought into deadly collision. So it, it almost just sounds like a thriller that takes place in an MFA program, but like I said, it does take a supernatural turn. Um, there was definitely a lot of questions about, you know, female friendships, the academic world, world, the kind of stuff that I totally like geek out on and really enjoy. Um, I don't know, some of it I couldn't tell if it was trying to be really like self-conscious and self-referential. Sometimes I found like the writing, I didn't know if it was in a sincere voice or if it was trying to be mocking. For example, she does have like a tick the it, where she'll say, you know, words falling out of someone's mouth like so many dead leaves or and then she'll make another uh, simile and say, like so much black silk. Like that was just a pattern that she used several times. And I think that it was conscious. I don't think that they just like missed that tick or it would have gotten caught in a writing workshop for sure or by an editor. But it's just kind of like talking about that sort of language that they use where they're making all of these sort of references to the body and trying to sound deep and everything that makes you want to roll your eyes in the back of your head. So I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the self-conscious pretentiousness but at the same time some of it did make me roll my eyes and be like is this like too too on the money is this too much of an insecure writer that's revealing all of that insecurity i don't know so anyway let's go ahead and get to page 14 which is where we got gift number one this is where it, what it looks like appropriately right right on brand we've got this little bunny munching on a skull which is the uh, logo of down the rabbit hole book box so let's see this is in the beginning where it's all pretty normal and there is another, uh, I think he's a poet, uh, she's in the fiction program, but he uh, is just this sweet guy that wants to talk to her. So it says, down the corridor behind Jonah, that's the sweet guy, I hear the elevator ding and my stomach flips because I know before the doors even open who it will be. I know even before I see his tall, sleek frame exit the doors whistling. Maine, a carefully cultivated chaos, arms inked with watchful crows, the lion approaching us, wearing his usual obscure noise band t-shirt, one of the bands we used to talk about back when we used to talk. He carries with him the scent of green tea he used to brew for us in his office, which he would ceremoniously stir, then pour into mud-colored, handleless cups. How's the writing, Samantha? He might ask in his deep Scottish lilt. That was my best attempt at a deep Scottish lilt. So there's this sort of thing where there's this understory. You're wondering, did she have an affair with this professor? Why is he avoiding her? Or is this all in her brain? Um, we do find out like he's, he's on the up and up. So this is what we got here. And as someone who was in grad school writing programs and like had, you know, closed office door meetings with some of my professors, I know that I know people talk. I know people fantasize about things like that. We got, of course, some stash green tea. We got four sachets because there is the scent of green tea that is associated with him throughout the novel. So moving on to page 23. So a lot of the gifts, a couple of the gifts came right in succession and then they were like, you know, up to a hundred pages. This was a pretty short book. I'm glad it wasn't any longer just because it did get kind of 
like crazy. Um, it did have some resolution at the end, weirdly enough, it kind of had a happy ending. So it was about 305 pages. So on page 23, let's see, she is talking about her friend Ava, who's like kind of a cool outsider, um, but she keeps going and hanging out with the bunnies and then going back to Ava and then hanging out with the bunnies. And obviously that alienates everybody. So there is some, um, there are some swear words in here, which I will just, um, quietly go over or use an alternate. So let's see. I look at her through my bangs, which she has encouraged me to grow over my eyes. Makes you look punk, she says. I look at her different colored eyes, her bleached and feathery hair that is the antithesis of bunny hair, cut asymmetrically and shaved in places. Her fishnet veil that she wears like a threshold to be crossed only if you dare. And here's what I realize. She would never wear mittens shaped like kittens or a dress with a Peter Pan collar. She would never say, love your dress, if she effing hates Hated your dress. She would never say, how are you? If she didn't care how you were, she would never eat a lavender cupcake that tasted like perfume or wear a perfume that made her smell like a cupcake. She would never wear lip balm for cosmetic purposes. She would never wear it unless her lips were seriously, seriously cracked. And if they were, she'd still put Lady Danger on them, which is the name of her lipstick. This bright blue red that looks surreally beautiful on her. But when I tried it on once, it made me look insane. Her perfume smells like rain and smoke and her eye makeup scares small children and she wears pumps even though she's at least two inches taller than I am and I'm a freak. Why? Because life is shorter than we are, she says. So why beat around the bush? So she's just so cool and you kind of get the sense that maybe she like not only idolizes her but romantically might have a thing for Ava as well. Um, but you know it's just she's just cool in this very like sort of stereotypical outsider way as well. So we have gift number two which was because we're talking about how the bunnies think that lipstick is for whores. They only wear lip balm. So we got five lip masks which are always fun so you can see how things kind of get sort of translated into gift form sometimes. And it does tell us this is a color collagen moisturizing lip mask that maybe even Ava would use. Um, uh, although she would not wear, give up her lipstick. All right, page 80 is our next one. I'm hoping that we have time for those fun passages that I marked because I just thought they were very interesting and they will get, be a little bit more revealing. All right, let's see. So now she's been invited over to hang out with the bunnies and they just kind of like want her to be deep and dark. Uh, so it says, so tell us about your prom, Samantha, Creepy Doll says. Creepy Doll's the nickname she has for one of them. Did you hate it? She makes an anticipatory anticipatory ew face that wel welcomes me to make my own. We picture you hating it or being way too cool for it. I didn't hate it. I loathed it with my whole soul. Did you have a date? Cupcake asks, tugging so hard on my hair, a tear slides down my cheek. I went with my best friend at the time. Alice, a lazy-eyed goth girl with whom I used to skip school to go read horror novels at the library. Alice showed up to my door wearing a Skull and Roses ball gown in her Day of the Dead tiara. I wore a floor-length black silk halter dress with a fire-breathing dragon on it that I thought was oh so cutting edge when I first came upon it at Goodwill. All right, so gift number three. I was like, ooh, do we get a ball gown? We did not get a ball gown, but we did get, this is kind of cool, a Day of the Dead tiara. So we got this fun uh, Dia de los Muertos headband, very like Frida, so I'm into this. I think this is really fun to have a flower crown headband, so I'm gonna keep wearing it. So this was one of those items that I thought was cool, a little detail that didn't have much to do with the story, but was a fun item to uh, include in the gifts as a little detail that got picked up. All right, page 147 is gift number four. I have to try to see where we are now because like I said, it, it gets a little crazy. So let's see. Oh, so she is actually with the bunnies, but or she's with Ava and she runs into the bunnies or vice versa, one or the other. So let's see. Oh, and they have um, some of their experiments involve creating men, which I thought was very weird in terms of like they're trying to create their ideal men. You'll see what I'm talking about if we get to those passages. It was a strange thing that that was like what they invested all of their effort into, into the work was man centered, right? When they're supposed to be these like feminist like writers. Anyway. 
It was those kittens that set him off, she continues, aiming the cherry of her cigarette at my dress. He thought they were actual kittens, so he grabbed her thinking, you know, lunch. But then when he realized she was a woman of flesh, that awakened all sorts of other sordid appetites. They shudder, hold each other, grip each other's hands. This is why we should never go downtown, Caroline says. At least not to the mall, adds Kira. You should definitely shop online from now on, Ava says. They look at her like she is a that, like she is definitely an owie, but their eyes say she is something else too. A necklace gleaming in the tall grass that could be a snake, that could be a necklace. I've seen you before, Caroline says, narrowing her eyes a little, tilting her head in a dreamy way. Have you? At the demitasse at the beginning of the school year. We saw her. Didn't we see her? Yes, Kira says. We saw you. They both stare at her with cocked heads, dreamy, curious eyes. Necklace? Snake? Snake necklace? Like... So these girls are just very strange and like nothing is what it seems, right? Gift number four, you may have guessed already. Um, so this was like an item that I, I like, that was a passage that I read and then when I finally went back to it, I was like, oh, that's a strange thing to highlight. Again, not super important in the storyline, but again, goes with that whole idea of things not being what they seem to be. So we got a snake necklace, which I actually thought was kind of cool. And of course, this box was coming to subscribers before Halloween. So kind of a cool thing with this dark green gemstone and then this snake wrapped around it as the, um, you know, to, to put it in place. I thought that was a cool pendant on a nice gold chain. And then I like that she included the chain as well as the pendant. So kind of a cool item. And then we have one more item. So five actually pretty tangible gifts. I mean, the, the tea wasn't like much, but it was kind of cool that she did include the tea as well. Tea sometimes comes as one of the like extra gifts. So this gift, I remember reading it and going to the page and not really understanding what it had to do with but I did remember there being mention of the gift a few pages before so originally this sticky note appeared on page 247 but I'm going to read you a passage that was a few pages back on 235 because I think it goes with the gift better so I know I'm making an executive decision so let's see what it says so um oh you know Samantha has managed to create the perfect boy on her first try doing these weird, crazy rituals with the bunnies, but her friend Ava has now fallen in love with him and doesn't know that he's a bunny boy. I know, I told you, it gets weird. So let's see, they are talking to one another, the three of them, Samantha, Ava, and Max, the bunny boy. It says, he looks at me feigning surprise, genuinely amused by my question as though I've aimed a toy gun at him from across the table. Oh, I don't like to talk about my work, Samantha. Ruins the thrill of the reveal. Surely you understand. Samantha's the same way about her writing, Ava says, patting my arm. He stops sawing at what looks like an ear stump and smiles at Ava. Really? Are you kidding? She's so secretive about it, Ava says. I am not so secretive, I mumble. You should see her scribbling in that notebook, covering the page with her hand like it's a test in junior high. She smiles at me. It's kind of sweet. Max grins at me from across the table. That's because she's writing about you, he says. I feel my chest catch fire, a redness spreading that I know, even in this dark room, is going to betray me. I can feel Ava looking at me. Samantha, is this true? But I can't face her. All right, so we have gift number five, which you probably guessed is indeed a lovely red notebook. But the passage that it was originally the sticky note was on was just about like a writing workshop where all of the bunnies have sort of started to unravel a little bit, but I didn't actually see a notebook in there. They just had these white boxes that had their work in them. So we got this classic ruled A5 notebook that does have a pen and a pen holder, and it just has these nice lined pages with space for the date and the page. And it does have a couple ribbon bookmarkers, which I thought was fun to have a gray one and a you can see the gray one, a gray one and a pink one. Uh, so this is supposed to be red, but it is kind of like a deep hot pink also. So oh, maybe it is supposed to be a fuchsia hot pink. That definitely makes more sense for the bunnies, but they had white boxes in sort of the dream that she was having. So let me see if I can get to, okay. So this is in that same writing workshop. So you will get part of that scene. Um, and the bunnies are actually kind of turning on one another. It says, 
Whenever I read one of Victoria's vignettes, I always feel so dumb because I can hardly understand them at all. And then I blame myself. I think, Kira, this must be just too brilliant for you to grasp. Surely you must have missed something, even though there's always been this small voice inside of me that says, um, what the F is this, please? This makes no sense. This is coy, and this is willingly obscure, and no one but Victoria will ever get this. I would, in fact, need to live inside Victoria's spoiled, fragmented, lazy, pretentious little mind to get it. And who apart from us, apart from me, is going to be willing to do that? So this is like the things that people think about each other in writing workshops. And then later, the uh, instructor who's leading it, she does pose this question, which I think is a good one. As female storytellers writing at this level, at this institution, we must be mindful of this. Do we really want to enforce the narrative that we're saved by a boy, illuminated by a boy, ravished by a boy? That same boy, it seems, uh, the same boy, it seems? Who says the same things to save and ravish and illuminate us? Do we really want that to be the work? the fruit to come out of our time here at Warren, one would hope the work wouldn't just be the stuff of slumber parties. Samantha, wouldn't you agree? So I loved that part. This is where it starts to all kind of like come together and you do realize that the author knows the pretentiousness of some of the words and she is actually revealing it. Um, so I appreciated it. It took a lot to get to that point though. So it was a good read. I will say if you have any like, um, if you have any experience with writing workshops um, and clicky girls, I definitely think you would enjoy this book, even though it is a little bit weird, even for me. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please help me out with a thumbs up. I would truly, truly appreciate it. Definitely need your support on these BookBox unboxings, and I will see you all very, very soon in my next unboxing.